You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 2nd of August, 2016. Thanks for joining us. We're happy to bring this material to you every day. In fact, I'm excited about doing it every day. I love the stock market. I think it is one of the best ways that you can seek returns on your money, the money that you've earned, that you now have for investment, that you might have in a 401k, you might have in an IRA. All of these things can be self-directed. I would talk to your financial advisor. I am not a financial advisor. I am simply here to bring education on how to read stock charts, but I want to encourage you as the days seem to be getting darker. If you heard our broadcast over the weekend, the weekly review and forecast. The global economy is, of course, slowing. We can see our stock market. It keeps sliding along right up at the top, the tip top. You know, what happens to things that go up? Well, at some point, they come down. Is it coming down yet? We're not going to make that forecast, but I can tell you if you study stock market trends and analysis, and the best place to do that and the cheapest place is to go online to Amazon and buy yourself the 2016 Stock Traders Almanac. It's put out every year by the Hershes. That is Jeff and his father, Yale, who started it, I think, back in the 70s. I buy it every single year, and I encourage you to open up the 2016 version and read about the presidential cycles. My friends, the administrations always tend to keep the market up going into an election year, And once that election is over and a new president, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump takes over, the markets typically crash. And you need to know how to read these charts. You need to go ahead and prepare. You need to be ready to protect yourself. We're not a stock calling service. We're not going to tell you what to do. What we're going to try to do in the meantime is educate you on how to read these charts. It is so critical that you study 10 minutes a day. That's all we ask. 10 minutes a day. Fill out your worksheet that you can find at the bottom of every single thing that we put out, whether it's on the YouTube videos, whether it's on iTunes, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, you name it. We always have attached and you can find it at our website. All you have to do is sign up for our weekly, or I'm sorry, our daily newsletter and you will get attached to that, our How to Read a Stock Chart video, our layout from freestockcharts.com. The operative word there is free. You don't have to pay for these charts. Nothing we give you, you have to pay for. In addition to that, we have our daily worksheet, a PDF, that you can print out and you can fill out every single day. You will find it invaluable in helping you learn how to read these stock charts. So important. Let's jump right in. What do we always start with? We always start with IYY. That is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Total Market Index Fund. It tracks the entire stock market. It's an exchange-traded fund. What does it show the market doing? Well, we have this candle on the first of August has continued to, and again, very sideways sliding, but it has slowly been creeping up. Now for the day, technically the total market was down 0.23%. We use the Heiken Ashi type candlesticks and the way that it is calculated is different from the open high, close, and low. It actually calculates differently on the training portion of our website. You can actually find our Heiken Ashi candlestick training, which I very much encourage you to take. You can spend years studying Japanese candlesticks, or you can spend 15 minutes or so studying Heiken Ashi, and I think you will get a whole lot more from it. Our job here at Charting Wealth is to boil all of this complicated stuff down to where you have a simple method to figure out what's really going on in the market. What do we see going on? Well, the market is sliding sideways, still in a confirmed up move. We do see the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Line, moving toward the red signal line. When that crosses over going down, you will see the market go down as it did back on the 13th of May. I'm sorry, of June when it crossed over going down. I'm looking back on the charts to see where that happened last time. Crossed over going up on the 11th or so of July and has been going up since then. Looks like it may be coming to another crossover going down. The derivative oscillator sure losing a lot of its speed. Still, though, the market is a confirmed up move, so we don't get out of the market at this point. We just pay attention to it. What's going on on the four-hour chart? 
Well, it crossed over going down, what we called a pullback, and it still may be a pullback. It may cross over, start going up. The derivative oscillator has. But what we've seen happen over the last many days is we had it cross over going down on the 19th of July, and the MACD has continued to move down. It has not yet crossed over going up. We ended the day with a big doji. What is that? Well, that looks like a cross on the charts. It's where the open and the close on our hike and Ashi are right around the same, and we've got a lot of movement up and down as far as where things went during the afternoon, a lot of pacing back and forth, but the movement itself was very slight. That means lots of indecision. We will just have to continue to watch. We're still above our fairly horizontal two-day trend line. On the, when we really zoom into our chart, it doesn't look as horizontal as it does on a regular chart when we go out in the time frame, but still in a confirmed down move. However, the derivative oscillator has flipped over going up, but MACD has not. They've actually diverged even further in the afternoon. So we'll continue to watch and just see what we see on these charts. It has been up here for a long time. Our Volatility has reduced significantly. Our Bollinger Bands that are depicted on our charts as blue ticks inside the chart movement is light blue. If you don't have our charts, again, we have that charting layout available for you free if you just sign up for the newsletter for free. And what you end up seeing is how the volatility has reduced so significantly that those Bollinger Bands have squeezed in and gotten very narrow. Again, you can call Bollinger Bands volatility bands because when they are wide apart, lots of volatility. When they narrow, you have very little volatility. That means very little price movement. And that's what we've been seeing lately. Now, let's go back to our two-day chart. So we have no trade available at this point. We are being cautious. We're going to look at the S&P 500 down 0.08% for the day. Again, very narrow range of movement sliding sideways. Uh, again, down technically for the day. Our Heiken Ashi does show a green candlestick, an open box, small but green candlestick. We see the MACD and the signal line coming together, the derivative oscillator losing upward momentum. That is losing upward momentum. If we look at our four-hour chart, we can see what happened intraday, down movement in the morning, further down movement in the afternoon. That pullback is continuing to happen. And again, it could turn over to a real pull down, not just a pullback, means that the large chart could move over. Sometimes pullbacks occur, and they really happen. That is, the market digests, say, an up move and the market pulls back on the short chart, and then it crosses back over going up, and that's when you can jump into an up move after the short-term pullback has occurred. Remember, the biggest wave is what controls. So we will continue to watch still above the fairly horizontal two-day trend line, and the Bollinger Bands have, of course, on the Standard & Poor 500 index, represented by SPY, have tightened up. Also, volatility has decreased sharply. We're going to see a little bit of a different chart, however, when we look at the Qs. What's that? That's the NASDAQ 100. And the technology stocks have been moving up since the 1st of July, crossed over on the 11th, and we've con continued to see lots of up movement. The charts were actually for the day on the Qs was up 0.53%. Now, if we look at the four-hour chart, what do we see? Well, we see continued up movement. Remember when we talked about at the end of last week how we had that pullback end and the charts crossed back over, gave you an entry point. Now, for those of you who were paying attention to our charts, way back when they the pullback occurred around the 19th and then crossed back over, on the 20th, and you got in anywhere along here. If you got in anywhere from the low of 112.17 to the high of 113.65, what have you seen happen? Well, you have seen the market go up significantly, closing 
at the end of the day on Monday at 115.77. So up two to three dollars a share in what? A week and a half, two weeks. So again, it's the kind of things we like to see. And that's what happens when you find a chart that works. And we keep encouraging you, don't just get in the market to get in the market. You are not a professional trader who is forced to trade. You can wait until the market is perfect. And why wouldn't you? That's the beautiful thing about learning to read a stock chart. Learning patience, learning to control your emotions, not being run by fear and greed, but being run by wisdom intelligence and experience. That's why we're telling you to practice this stuff. We are not telling you what to do. We're asking you to consider thoughtfully what we teach. Practice it, and when you can get good at it, then you can make a decision, and only then, to spend your own money in the way you see fit, to invest your own money in the way you see fit, to be able to take advantage of being able to read a stock chart. It is so powerful. It's like somebody giving you the keys to the kingdom if you will just do this. And I can't make you do it. I can't. I can give you all that we give you, give it to you for free, encourage you, share with you, but you got to do it. You got to practice. You don't put in the practice. You know, you're not going to learn how to do this. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. Okay. How do you get to wealth and riches in the stock market? Practice. Now, Enough said there. Let's go back to our two-day chart. Look at what gold's doing. Gold was up 0.19% for the day. We're still in a confirmed down move. Gold has not yet crossed over going up, so we don't have a call on gold yet. Going up, our two-day chart does not show that. If we then look at our four-hour chart, what do we see? Gold could be called in a pullback at this point. If it does cross over going down on the four-hour chart before the two-day chart, crosses over going up, then of course you might have an entry point. We don't have one yet on gold. Now I'll tell you what we have been looking for and what we have seen over the last few weeks is our four-hour chart starting to work again. Those of you who've been with us a long time, remember when we just used the four-hour chart to trade gold? Four-hour chart started working again. If you started jumping into gold on just the four-hour chart crossing over, particularly when you had nice, clean crossings, look indeed how well our four-hour chart has been working for us. Has even worked this last time. The last several crossings have been good. Why? Because we haven't had that sideways slide we had at the beginning of the year. Gold has been working pretty good on our four-hour chart. Don't you love it? Isn't it wonderful? And again, what we ask you to do is experiment. Try things. Look at how things work. We're not beholden to anything except processes and decision-making that makes money for us. That's what it's all about. That's the reason we do this. We enjoy it, but we do it to make money and to succeed. So that is where we are on gold. That's where we are on all three of our charts. If you haven't had our, if you haven't heard our weekly review and forecast yet, you got to have that so you know where the weekly charts are, the double longs, that is the big, big charts. Because remember, all else being equal, the market always moves in the direction of the biggest chart. My friends, we love to hear from you. We appreciate all the nice things you say about us and you do for us. And you might be saying, well, what can I do for you guys? You don't ask me to do anything. We do. We ask you to do two things. Ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are now over 800 subscribers. Thousands listen every week, but it's those hardcore subscribers. YouTube tells us we have to get to 1,000 subscribers before we can do our proprietary broadcasts. Well, guess what? We're not too far away. We need all of you to go there and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Charting Wealth. Also, we need you to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast and give us a five-star rating. You've gotten us as high as like six in the world on stock charts. Well, no, actually stock market podcasts. Stock charts were clearly there in the top two or three. But just the whole stock market you guys have made us in the top six or so. So please, we want to get to number one. 
and we need you to subscribe to our iTunes channel and to continue to give us those five-star ratings. We so appreciate you. Let us hear from you. If you haven't already signed up for the newsletter, you need to go to chartingwealth.com. All the good trainings there, all the good trainings also at our YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We do all we can for you. And please help us out just a little bit. God bless. Thank you so much. Hope that you are learning this. Be sure to fill out your daily worksheets every day. We're just asking folks 10 minutes. It will pay itself back. Just imagine 10 minutes a day. And when you go back years from now and look at what you reaped in return, it'll probably be the best return on your time you've ever seen if you will stick with it and learn to read these charts. We're not saying it's easy but we're saying that you can do it. It just takes your time. God bless. Let us hear from you from chartingwealth.com.